Welcome to Electra Online, and in order to understand better how to use the HRI diagram to measure distances to stars, we need to come up with a standardized method to establish the luminosity or the brightness of stars that is, as it appears to us from our observations, and we need also a scale on how to determine the absolute brightness, how bright it actually is, irregardless of what it looks like to us. So, in order to measure or in order to establish the actual brightness, you have to have some standard distance where you want to place the objects so you can see how bright they would appear if they were at that location. But first, before we get there, let's take a look at the scale that we use to actually measure the brightness of stars because we need to start there at first. So in the old days, back in the days of the Greeks, they began to do that already. They began to classify stars by their brightness and they came up with this brightness scale where one meant the brightest stars in the sky and six meant the dimmest stars in the sky. And so they didn't have any fancy telescopes or, or uh, good instruments to really measure the brightness. They just went by what they could see with the naked eye. And so they just kind of estimated based upon you know, what it looked like. And so their, their scheme was that a star that had magnitude one brightness was twice as bright as a star that had magnitude two. One was uh, two was twice as bright as three, three was twice as bright as four, and so forth. It was just basically a scale by two, and that means that one was four times as bright as three, one was eight times as bright as a four star, one was 16 times as bright as a level five star, and one was 32 times as bright as a magnitude six star, for example. And so there's a few examples of how that worked. But with modern instruments and with telescopes, we began to realize that that scale really didn't work very well and the estimations with the naked eye really didn't give us a good idea of how bright it was. So we came up with a new magnitude scale and we called it the apparent magnitude scale. And we use a small letter M, I don't know where I have it here, right here, small letter M to indicate that's the apparent magnitude. So the scale worked the same way, smaller numbers are brighter, bigger numbers are dimmer, but we realized we also needed negative numbers because some objects in the sky were actually brighter than a one. They were brighter than a zero. So we kept on going. Minus one is brighter than zero. Minus two is brighter. Minus one and so forth. So how did this scale work? Well, they had it in such a way that a difference of five magnitudes represented a difference of a hundred times the brightness in the luminosity. For example, if one star has magnitude minus two and another star has magnitude plus three, the difference between those two is a total of five, right? Three minus a minus two is five. And so the ratio of the brightness of, of star one versus the brightness of star two, that ratio, B1 divided by B2 is equal to 2.512 to the difference in the magnitudes. Now see, in that old scale, they used just the number two, but they realized they had to adjust it, so they adjusted it to 2.512 to the delta M. And so in our particular case, that would be equal to 2.512 to the fifth power, because that's the difference between three and minus two, which is actually equal to 100, which meant that this star will be 100 times as bright as this star. As long as there's five magnitudes in between, one star is five times, as, uh, 100 times as bright as the other. For example, a magnitude zero star is 100 times as bright as a magnitude five star. And a magnitude minus four is 100 times as bright as a plus one and so forth. So a delta of five magnitudes means 100 times brighter. Or the other way around, star B is 100 times dimmer than star A, for example, or our star two is 100 times dimmer as star one. What if it, the difference is not five? Well, you can use your calculator. Let's say that we have uh, a magnitude. Let's call this uh, B3 and let's call this um, B4. So if star three has a magnitude plus one and star four has a magnitude plus four. And remember, these are apparent magnitudes. That's the way they appear to us from the Earth. That's not necessarily the way they actually are, but that's the way they appear to us. So you realize that since a star three has a smaller magnitude than star four. Star three is brighter. The question is how much brighter? So the ratio B3 divided by B4 is equal to 2.512 raised to the difference in the magnitudes. In this case, the difference between these two magnitudes is four minus one, which is three. So we have 2.512 to the third power. And then of course you need your calculator. So 2.512 raised to the third power is 15.9 or about 16. That means this star, star three, is 16 times as bright as star four. And that's how we use the magnitude scales. Now, for some comparisons, 
How bright is the sun? Well, the sun is, of course, really bright. It has a magnitude of minus 26.7. That's, of course, not the absolute brightness, the real brightness. It just appears that bright to us. Obviously, the brightest object in the sky. Second brightest is the full moon. At the full moon, it's minus 12.6. Third brightest object is Venus at a magnitude of minus 4.4. Fourth brightest object, well, there's a couple more planets that are also really bright. For example, uh, Mars and Jupiter at their brightest are magnitude of about minus 2.5 or so. For Sirius, the brightest star in the sky is minus 1.4. Vega, one of the bright stars that you see primarily in the summer and the evening, uh, has a magnitude of plus 0.03. They used to use Vega as the zero reference mark, but with more accurate measurements, it turned out that it was actually slightly above a zero and so it's still the reference mark, but it's slightly above at 0.03. Betelgeuse in the constellation of Orion is 0.58. Regulus in the constellation of Leo is 1.35. Polaris, the North Star, magnitude plus 2.2. And the dimmest star that you can see with the naked eye is about a magnitude plus 6. If you go out in the desert or in the forest where there's no lights, no city lights or anything like that, you can see stars as dim as a plus six, and then in the sky on a clear night, you can see about 3,000 stars. So about 3,000 stars on one side of the sky there have a magnitude of about plus six, and of course, if you go to the Sun Hemisphere, you'll see another about 3,000 stars with magnitude plus six. So in total, you can see about 6,000 stars with the naked eye all around the sky. Pluto, very small trans-Neptunian object at several billion miles away from here, has a magnitude of plus 15. The most powerful telescopes on the Earth tend to have a magnitude of plus 21, although now with special techniques it can go beyond that. The Hubble Space Telescope has a magnitude of plus 30, and they've actually gone a little bit beyond that as well to like about plus 31 point something. So you can realize you can see an enormous amount of detail with Hubble te Space Telescope because it can see objects so, so far away. But that gives you kind of a feel of how we use the magnitude scale. This is, of course, the apparent magnitude scale. And then on the next video, we'll look at the, the um, not the apparent, but the absolute magnitude scale, and we'll compare the two, and then finally we'll know this and know how we use these scales and the techniques we've learned to find the distance to anything in the universe. So that's the key to understanding how we determine the distance to stars, uh, galaxies, and anywhere else, anything else in the universe.